Tell us about this basket thing. Oh, I have to hide everything that's not 18th century, so sometimes I forget people come over here and I'm not in here, and they say, you know, we couldn't find the lights. Well, I have it under a basket because you can't have a light switch in the 18th century. That would just be wrong. So I hide it under baskets, and I do forget sometimes to tell people about that. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Hi, I'm Charlotte Gear. Welcome to Have a Tree. I created this bed and breakfast. This is our family farm that I'm in the middle of. This was uh, the first homestead back in uh, 1700 that was built by James Gear. I grew up in that farmhouse right there. I still have my mom. She's going to be 92. She's in the farmhouse with my, my one daughter. And then I have my brother Richard is right up over the hill over there. My brother Tom over there. My sister Holly was back there. And we feel so lucky to be on this farm. And about 38 years ago, my dad came up with the idea of uh, turning it into Christmas trees. And now it's one of the bigger Christmas tree farms uh, in New England. Every year we uh, plant 10,000 trees. And right now we've got, I don't even know. I, I always ask my brothers, how many trees do we have? And they say, we don't know. So it's an early farm. It needed an early, an early building, an early farmhouse. The day came, we took the stucco off the center chimney. And you can't see it from here, but it has the date on it, 1779. It's an authentic 18th century building that I moved here many, many years ago. We call this the piano room. And because I got the piano and here it is. And how have you decorated this space? I became an antique dealer. A home should suit the land or the location. To me, the furnishings should suit the home. So when I was trying to reconstruct this building, all my money went into that. I've got American as well as English pieces, but I have, I'm still an active antique dealer and it's one of my favorite, favorite things. I have a piece that is a miracle. I received a phone call from an antique dealer that knew that I was an antique dealer and a gear, and she said, would you be interested in a gear Bible? And I could barely speak. I was like, oh my gosh, of course I would be, but especially if it could be my lineage, but that would be nothing short of a miracle. But I got in my car, I went to her, her antique shop immediately, and I walked in there, and I opened up the Bible, and, you, and it's my ancestors. This is my most precious possession. This has all my, my, my grandfather, my great-grandfather, my great-great-grandfather, their wives, their marriages, their deaths, everything in that Bible. I think that is probably the most amazing moment in my life when that Bible came back to me because my mom, no doubt, gave it away or, you know, it just got out of the family because they they didn't consider it worth anything or of interest. They wanted, again, to modernize the house. Anything and everything in the house, I don't ever go later than 1840, so we, we really do try. But there's a story behind everything. It was always the battle of the budget and uh, uh, the hunt. And this is called the keeping room, or also known as the early kitchen. All the cooking would have been done right out of this firebox. And this is a very unusual fireplace because the beehive oven is in the middle of the back of this big firebox. This is the North Parlor. And this paneling was not here originally. It's so much fun to be enjoying it as a B&B. So we've got four sleeping chambers, and the inn has 12 rooms and four sleeping chambers, five bathrooms, and I added a carriage barn. That's where we do wedding receptions and such. The kitchen is my, it's small, but we can do so much out of the kitchen because I have a double oven. This is a Wolf double oven. That was my pride and joy. And I had a unattractive regular oven in here and the day came, I had saved up the money I, and I redid the kitchen. And then, like, I have an outlet over here, and I don't want to see that either, so I have this silly thing hanging here, but it's, it's, you know, I don't want to see the outlet. Why don't we go upstairs? This room, it has, uh, this is a reproduction bed, and it has bed hangings. And it's just, you know, that's what they would have had back in the day. So, I got these bed hangings from one of my favorite places called the Seraph, S-E-R-A-P-H. 
Originally, I did have an antique bed that was a rope bed and it had the feather mattress and it looked so good in that room, but it was absolute torture to sleep on that. And I tried it because I thought that'd be really interesting and, you know, gotta live the 18th century. It, it was awful, memory foam beds. And so for the B&B, &B, I have to be practical. They didn't have bathrooms in the 18th century. So I had to shorten the size of the bedrooms so I could get bathrooms put in them. And it was just, it was challenging. And Pond Meadow has its private bath as well, but these are bed hangings that are a little bit, a little bit different. I try to have every room be a little bit different. And this room has its own fireplace and uh, views of the pond and the meadows, thus the name Pond Meadow. Okay, now we're going to the first floor, which has an authentic 18th century tavern and tap room. So here we go. Initially, this, this didn't exist. When I moved the building here, it was, uh, you know, just a unfinished space. And I really wanted to do what it would have been was a building that would have had a tap room and a tavern. And I went to a place called the Wayside Inn and they had this cage bar and this, I fell in love with it. They reconstructed this, this cage bar and that comes right down. It's called a wicket or a cage bar, uh, but that wicket comes, comes right down. You just feel like sitting down having a beer or a glass of wine or something down here. It's just that atmosphere that was what it would have been back in the day. So we have the TVs hidden behind the paneling. And uh, so here it is, but um, this is a boot bottle. Very unusual. That's 18th century. It's got the nice uh, hand-blown mark on it. It's, it's a, it's, I just adore it. Uh, this is a wonderful rumlet. They would have had this. They would have had their, you know, rum or who knows what in it. And they'd have this tied to their saddle. This is called a wicket or a cage bar. And that comes down. You're nice and tall, you can reach it, but this, that comes right down. And what they would do actually is back in the day, they would lock it up because they would have their libation, if you will. Um, uh, and they would have people staying overnight in like an ordinary or like this was an inn. So they would put that cage bar down, put it, they would lock it up and lock the door there. And that way the guests would not get into any of the libation. The bar is open tonight, so the cage bar is open. Thank you so much for coming to Have a Tree. It's been a pleasure meeting you, and I've got to get cooking. I've got people coming up for the night at the B&B, &B, and I'm going to start making something yummy for them. So thank you again for coming to Have a Tree, and come back again. Click here to watch another amazing home tour, and be sure to subscribe to Homeworthy.